Okay, so this is the pattern that I designed for the phaser, and I do have a free download for this at thewoodlandelf.com slash pattern slash Star Trek. You're going to be starting with this piece, and you're going to cut four, um, five of them. I only cut four, but five is probably going to be wider and better. So you just want to trace those onto a piece of corrugated cardboard and cut them out with an X-Acto knife. And again, I only did four, but you'll probably want to do five. And they should all just fit together nicely. So then you just want to take a glue gun and glue all four of them together, one right on top of the other. Make sure that they're all aligned well, just like that. And so then you'll cut two of this piece, just like that. You're going to glue one on each side. You want to make sure that the diagonal is towards the back of the phaser. And you'll put one on each side. Just hot glue them in place on the handle. And then you're just going to take a piece of paper, regular paper, and you're just going to hot glue that all the way around the edge of the phaser. And that'll cover up the corrugated parts of the cardboard. Give it a nice smooth edge. You want to start with a piece of paper that's bigger than the width of the phaser. And you'll just glue it all in place. And then you'll just take a pair of scissors and cut the paper off right next to the cardboard to give everything a nice smooth appearance. You'll just do that all the way around the entire phaser. And then you're going to cut out this weird looking little piece and the tooth piece out of a piece of 2mm craft foam. And those are going to go around the top of the phaser. And there's going to be one on the front and one on the back. You're just going to leave the little divot open. And they'll be glued on like that. First you're just going to draw three sets of four ovals. One on each side and one at the top. And you'll just cut those out with an X-Acto knife, just like that and that'll slip over the top. You just want to take a heat gun and heat that up to form it around the top of the phaser. And then you want to take something rounded. I can just use the edge of my scissors. And you just want to heat it up some more so that it gives it a nice rounded edge across the top. But before you actually glue that on, you just want to take a rectangle of craft foam and you want to wrap that around the handle of the phaser. And then you just want to heat that up so that it forms right around the different layers of the cardboard. Just like that. You can kind of see that it took the shape of the thin pieces. It molded itself right around them. And so then you just want to punch some holes in it using either a hole puncher to punch the holes or you can also drill the holes out with a straw. The straw just goes through the foam pretty easily. You just drill out the little circles. Just like that. You'll do them on each side. Make sure they match up on both sides. And then you'll just hot glue that right around the handle of the phaser. You want to cut off, before you hot glue it, you want to cut off the tip at a rounded edge, just like that. Okay, so then you hot glue it to the handle. Make sure it fits around there nice and tight. And cut off any excess. And so this is what you have so far. So then just take one of those little circles that you cut out. You're just going to glue that to the top of the handle. And then take a second one and glue that to the bottom of the handle. And then of course you do the same thing on the other side of the handle. So then the little wing piece that you were working with earlier, now you'll finally glue that onto the top. Make sure the diagonal is toward the divot. And then you'll take the little two-shaped piece and glue that to the top. You want to make sure that when you put it on, the little wings line up exactly with the back of the phaser. Just glue it in place on both sides. just like that. And so then I just took an old marker top and I cut off a little bit with a utility knife. To cut it down to size. You want it just so the tip sticks out a little beyond the edge of the phaser. And so then just put some glue on it and hot glue a little bit of craft foam around it to make it a little bit thicker. And just cut off any excess once you've gone all the way around. So then you're just going to glue that right onto the end of the phaser. Make sure the tip sticks out, and you want it to be just a little bit lower than the foam. So then cut off a little bit 
of the foam off the top. I'm just going to bend the edges down a little bit. I'm going to make the top even more curved. I have a few bends there, but they're not too noticeable. So then I take another piece of craft foam and I cut it off at an angle. I'm just going to put that in the curve of the phaser. It's going to be the bottom part of the trigger. And then I cut a thinner piece. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little thinner than the other piece. And cut that one off at an angle as well. I'm just going to glue that one to the center of the other one. And so then I cut a circle of craft foam. Stuck that towards the top of the phaser. And then a rectangle. and Stuck that right in the middle of the circle for the dial. And then finally I cut off a little piece of straw. And then I took a few of those circles that I drilled out earlier and just hot glued one in each side of the straw so the edges of the straw are closed. Just get yourself a nice solid cylinder. Just put a little bit of hot glue on that and glue it to the base of the foam that you wrapped around the handle. And then just take a tiny square, angle the edges on both ends, and just glue that to the straw and the handle, making sure all the edges are tight. And so here is the fully assembled phaser. This is what you should have so far. And then you're just going to take some Elmer's glue and give the entire thing a coating of the glue. You'll paint the foam and the cardboard. You just want to paint the entire... Give it three coats of glue all together. And then when the glue is dry, the last coat, you'll take some puffy paint. You'll draw three lines at the top on each side and across the top of the divot. Just like that. You should match all the way around. And then the bottom, just draw a few lines on the bottom. And do that on both sides. They were actually engraved, I'm just using puffy paint. And then you just give the whole thing a coating of black spray paint. Just like that. And you can use a glossy, if you can find a glossy spray paint. Um, it does make it look like machined metal. Mine wasn't as glossy as I would have liked it, but that's what I've got. So then just take some metallic silver paint, and you'll just paint the back end where it should be silver. Just like that. And then you'll paint the dial silver. Just like that. And then moving to the front, you'll paint silver in all the little holes. Like that. And then finally you'll paint the very tip of it silver. I left the middle part, the actual marker top, black just so it looked like there was an actual hole. So then going back to the back end of the gun, I just took some darker gray, painted a line across there to give it dimension. And so here is what the finished phaser should look like. I swear my pretty floor bonnet, I will end you.